Hi folks, my name is Stephen Cook and I'm a professor at Carleton University and over the past nine months or so we've all been certainly focused on the, the pandemic and I think we've all been you know focused on our safety and taking care of each other uh, but many of us are anglers and so our lab studies fish and fisheries and particularly the recreational sector so we've spent a lot of time thinking about what the pandemic means to fish and fishing and so we conducted a survey uh, a number of months ago and what I'm going to do today is briefly share the key findings that have arisen from that work. So, as you're all well aware, the uh, COVID pandemic led to a number of fishing restrictions uh, across North America, 63% of the jurisdictions uh, that we uh, assessed, so these are provinces, states, territories, 92% uh, of them allowed fishing, however, there were still closures of parks, boat ramps, various restrictions, competitive angling events cancelled, and so on. So, there's no doubt that across the board there were impacts on the recreational sector. In Ontario, March 17th, the state of emergency was declared, and it was during that early phase from March 17th through to about May 16th that a lot of parks, a lot of boat launches were closed, uh, pretty heavily restricted. And then after that, what we're calling phase two, from about uh, May 16th on to July 15th, things tended to open up a little bit more. And so for the purpose of today, we're contrasting what happened during that early phase versus that, that second phase. And so what we did is we put together an online survey uh, that was focused on uh, uh, recreational fishers in Ontario. It was focused on, on uh, resident anglers uh, that actually live here and that are between the ages of 18 and 65, i.e. they are license holders. Um, had a, a bunch of help from folks such as Ontario and of Doors, lots of fishing celebrities and sharing this around. And in the end, we had over a thousand respondents. So in terms of what we found, uh, what was nice is we were able to have folks compare their, their fishing activity in 2020 during the pandemic back to the same period in 2019. So during that early phase, people were fishing in 2019, 5.9 days on average, whereas in 2020, it was down just a little bit, uh, about a, a day and a half. Uh, same with that later phase. So obviously more fishing during the later phase in both years, uh, but uh, relative to 2019 when we didn't have the pandemic, in 2020 we saw a drop in fishing of about, uh, about two days. Now those uh, differences are relatively small and didn't pop out as being statistically significant, but nonetheless uh, something to pay attention to. I'll also note that for this specific analysis, we we excluded anyone who hadn't fished uh, or just started fishing in the last five years. So there's a whole bunch of folks that started in 2020. So there was additional effort that came from, from those individuals. Uh, and that's really evident if you look at the data. And this isn't data we compiled. This is data from CDC. And you can look at the, uh, the permit sales data. Those are, those are uh, numbers that have been provided by various um, provincial agencies across Canada. And across the board, license sales are up. And that's consistent with what a lot of folks said in our survey, in that many started fishing again because they had time on their hands and they really needed to get outdoors. Some other findings that popped out of our survey, there was no change in fish capture. The number of fish captured uh, during different phases of the uh, lockdown and then from 2019 versus 2020, nothing changed. But we did see a 30% decrease in fish harvest. Uh, that really surprised us. We expected that in uh, during the pandemic, relative to 2019, people would be taking advantage of this uh, as a, a food source, whether that be you know some some bluegill or walleye, uh, whatever the case may be. But overall, we did we saw a decrease in fish harvest during that period. We did see an increase in spending, uh, approximately 25% increase spent on rec fishing during the pandemic. However, that was almost all devoted towards online purchases from big box stores or orders from the U.S. So we aren't necessarily helping out the, the smaller um, uh, privately owned businesses here in Ontario. And that's something we need to keep an eye on. And then 60% of anglers decreased fishing related travel. Uh, that's not surprising, although there, it, you know, there, it means that there certainly were still a group of folks in the province that were heading out uh, uh, looking for places outside of their primary fisheries management zone.
Uh, one of the other things we asked about was quality of communication. Both the Ministry of Natural Resources and the municipal governments uh, were communicating with anglers in various ways about fishing. And in general, uh, municipal governments were more likely to be rated as having poor communication, MNRF a little bit better. Uh, in general, there was a lot of mixed messaging, and that led to confusion about the restrictions as well as why these closures uh, were being instituted how it was truly supporting uh, public health. Uh, there was also need for more clarity relating to what's allowable, uh, access and closures from, from both groups. Uh, and in general, some suggestions moving forward is that governments need to be clear, uh, frequent, uh, and, and ensure that the information that they're sharing is done in a timely manner. One of the things that also popped out in the survey was that the OFAH, the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters, is recognized as providing uh, a clear and consistent voice and communication during uh, the pandemic. And just to give you an example, people repeatedly pointed back towards uh, their website. Uh, they maintained a, a, an informal database that uh, listed the restrictions, closures, what's open and what's closed for fishing and hunting. And then they also provided tips. How to, you know, if you're going to fish, how do you do this safely uh, during a pandemic? So just a, a shout out to them. Uh, in terms of preparing for a second wave, you now of course we did this survey not knowing that a second wave was actually happening and we're well into that now. Uh, respondents uh, indicated that they wanted to see the uh, Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry increase enforcement, monitoring and stocking, strengthen harvest regs, and educate anglers, especially the new ones, uh, about the need for licenses, how to handle fish appropriately, uh, and what the rules are. The majority also wanted the government to keep U.S. borders closed. That's come to fruition. Our, our U.S. borders are still closed. Keep boat launches and ramps open, and I believe that that's the case in most locations. Uh, but limit access to high-risk locations and favor local use. So if there needed to be a, a shutdown or there was too much uh, fishing effort in a, a given uh, location, uh, favor the locals uh, as opposed to folks that are, are traveling from uh, from further away in the province. And then many anglers uh, who respond to our survey also mentioned uh, the benefits of fishing that come in terms of mental health, outdoor experience, and food security. So uh, if you want to read the full story, uh, there's a link right there. There'll be a link in the, the Facebook uh, uh page as well and you're welcome to reach out uh, there's my uh, email there's our website if you have further questions so thanks a lot and hope you found this in interesting